It's a blazing hot afternoon in ancient Greece, around 490 BCE. A brilliant young philosopher named Zeno sits in the shade of a tree, watching a tortoise slowly make its way across the courtyard. What begins as idle observation is about to become one of the most mind-bending challenges in all of mathematics, a puzzle so profound that 2,500 years later, it still makes physicists and mathematicians scratch their heads in bewilderment. Welcome to Zeno's Paradox, where common sense meets mathematical impossibility and where infinity becomes the most dangerous concept in all of human thought. Imagine the scene. Achilles, the legendary Greek hero known for his incredible speed, decides to race against a humble tortoise. Now, being a sporting fellow, Achilles gives the tortoise a generous head start. Let's say 100 meters. The race begins. Achilles, with his godlike speed, quickly covers those initial 100 meters and reaches the point where the tortoise started. But here's the catch. During the time it took Achilles to run those 100 meters, the tortoise has moved forward. Not much, perhaps only 10 meters, but it has moved. No problem, thinks Achilles, and he sprints to cover those 10 meters. But once again, by the time he reaches where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved a bit further, maybe just one meter this time. Achilles covers that one meter. The tortoise moves another 10 centimeters. Achilles covers those 10 centimeters. The tortoise moves one centimeter, and so on and so on, forever. According to this logic, Achilles can never actually catch the tortoise. Every time he reaches where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved to a new position. There's always another gap to close, no matter how small. But wait, this is clearly absurd. We see faster objects overtake slower ones every day. Race cars pass bicycles. Jets overtake birds. Common sense tells us that Achilles should easily overtake that tortoise. So what's going on? How can such seemingly flawless logic lead to such an obviously false conclusion? Before we go deeper into the mathematics, let's consider an even simpler version of the same paradox. One you can demonstrate right now. Hold your hands about two feet apart. Now, you're going to bring them together to clap. But here's the twist. First, move your right hand exactly halfway to your left hand. Then, move it halfway again through the remaining distance. Then halfway again, and again, and again. Following this rule, you'd first move your hand one foot closer, then six inches closer, then three inches, then one and a half inches, then 0 0.75 inches. Each movement gets smaller and smaller, but there are infinitely many of them. According to Zeno's logic, your hands should never actually touch. There's always another halfway movement to make, no matter how tiny. Yet clearly, when you actually try this, your hands do clap. The physical world seems to mock the mathematical argument. Let's put some real numbers to this paradox and see where the mathematics leads us. Imagine Zeno's house is exactly one mile from the park, and he walks at a steady pace of one mile per hour. Common sense tells us this journey should take exactly one hour. But let's follow Zeno's step-by-step -step analysis. First, he walks halfway to the park. That is 0.5 miles, taking 0.5 hours. Then, he walks half the remaining distance. That is 0.25 miles, taking 0.25 hours. Then half of what's left. That is 0.125 miles, taking 0.125 hours. And so on, forever. The total time for this journey becomes 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0 0.125, plus 0 0.0625, plus 0 0.03125, and so on. This is an infinite series, an endless string of numbers that we're trying to add together. And here's where Zeno's argument becomes truly insidious. Since we're adding infinitely many positive numbers, he might say, shouldn't the sum be infinite? Shouldn't it take forever to reach the park? For over 2,000 years, mathematicians struggled with Zeno's challenge. The breakthrough came in the 19th century when they developed a rigorous understanding of infinite series and limits. You can add up infinitely many numbers and still get a finite answer. Let's see how this works with a visual approach. Imagine a square with an area of exactly one square meter. Now, let's slice this square in a very specific way. Cut the square in half. You now have two pieces, each with an area of 0 0.5. Take one of those halves and cut it in half again. You now have one piece with an area of 0.5 and two pieces with an area of 0.25. Take one of the 0.25 pieces and cut it in half again. Continue this process forever. As you keep slicing, you create smaller and smaller blue pieces. But no matter how many cuts you make, the total area of all the pieces, both the large original piece and all the tiny blue pieces, still equals exactly one square meter, the infinite series we've created. 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.125 
plus 0.0625, and so on, adds up to exactly 0.5, which combined with the remaining uncut piece, also 0.5, gives us our original 1 square meter. But how do we prove that this infinite series actually equals 0.5? Here's the elegant mathematical trick that resolves the paradox. Let's call our infinite sum s. s equals 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.125 plus 0.0625 and so on. Now, let's multiply the entire equation by 0.5. 0.5 times s equals 0.25 plus 0.125 plus 0.0625, plus 0.03125, and so on. Notice something remarkable. The right side of the second equation is almost identical to the right side of the first equation. It's just missing that initial 0.5. If we subtract the second equation from the first, s minus 0.5, s equals 0.5. That means 0.5, s equals 0.5, so s equals 1. Wait, that doesn't seem right for our hand clapping example. Let me recalculate for the specific case where we start 2 meters apart. S equals 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.125 and so on. 0 0.5 S equals 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.125 plus 0 0.0625 and so on. Subtracting, S minus 0 0.5 S equals 1, so S equals 2. Perfect. Your hands travel exactly two meters, just as common sense suggests. But here's where things get truly weird. We've shown mathematically that the infinite series adds up to a finite number. We've proven that Zeno can reach the park in exactly one hour. We've demonstrated that your hands can travel exactly two meters and clap together. Yet the process Zeno described involves infinitely many steps. Each step takes a finite amount of time. Infinity times anything finite should be infinite, right? Here's the key insight that resolves this. While there are infinitely many steps, each step takes progressively less time. The steps don't all take the same amount of time. They get faster and faster, shrinking towards zero. In our hand clapping example, if you move at one meter per second, the first half meter takes 0.5 seconds. The next quarter meter takes 0.25 seconds. The next eighth meter takes 0.125 seconds, and so on. The total time is 0.5 plus 0 0.25, plus 0 0.125, and so on, which equals exactly one second. Not all infinite series behave so nicely. Mathematicians developed tests to determine when an infinite sum gives a finite answer, called convergent, and when it explodes to infinity, called divergent. One simple test works like this. Take any term in your series and divide it by the previous term. If this ratio approaches a number less than one as you go further out in the series, then your sum converges to a finite value. In our Zeno series, 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.5 equals 0 0.5. 0 0.125 divided by 0 0.25 equals 0 0.5. 0 0.0625 divided by 0 0.125 equals 0 0.5. The ratio is consistently 0 0.5, which is less than 1, so our series converges. Zeno's paradox reveals something profound about the nature of reality itself. On one hand, our mathematical analysis clearly shows that infinite processes can have finite outcomes. The math works perfectly, and it matches our everyday experience. But on the other hand, we're claiming that an infinite process, one without a final step, can somehow be completed. How can something without an end actually finish? This isn't just mathematical hair-splitting. It touches on fundamental questions about the nature of space and time. Can space be divided infinitely many times? Are there truly infinitely small intervals of time? Or is there some smallest possible unit of space and time that cannot be subdivided further? Modern physics suggests that space and time might indeed be quantized at the smallest scales, that there might be fundamental units, like the Planck length and Planck time, below which our usual concepts of space and time break down. If this is true, then Zeno's paradox might not apply to the real world after all. But here's what makes Zeno's paradox so enduring. Even if space and time are quantized, the mathematical version of the paradox remains perfectly valid. We can still construct infinite series that converge to finite values. We can still imagine dividing distances in half forever. Even if we can't do it physically, the paradox lives at the intersection of mathematics and reality, of the infinite and the finite, of logic and common sense. It's a reminder that our intuitions about infinity can be spectacularly wrong.
and that the mathematical world contains surprises that can challenge our deepest assumptions about how things work.